Governor of Ekiti State, Kayode Fayemi, on Monday emerged from his 14-day isolation and immediately flagged off the distribution of palliatives to 20,000 indigenous citizens in the state. Fayemi also relaxed the lockdown imposed on the state since March the 29th by directing that citizens be allowed to ply their trades between 6 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Tuesday and Thursday this week to restock and undertake economic pursuits that would keep their house hold till the curfew will be lifted. And joining us live via telephone is Executive Governor of Ekiti State, Dr. Fayemi Kaidi. Good morning, Your Excellency. Good morning. And welcome back from isolation. Thank you very much. Our first question would be, how did you cope during the isolation? What were you about those days? Well, isolation afforded me opportunity to reflect uh, on a wide range of issues, not the least the one we're dealing with, COVID-19, and how to uh, manage the challenges of the moment. Uh, it was also a period uh, for me to reconnect with, my, with myself, with my old um, first love, so I, I was reading a lot, I was writing a lot, but I was still working, I was still running the state. Uh, I just wasn't in contact with my people, uh, but I had, of course, competent aides who were taking instructions and then following up with things. And in that period, we had our uh, index case go negative, uh, even though we then had another case uh, that came on stream in our isolation center, and we've then uh, been dealing with the other elements in our uh, stay-at-home order, which essentially was the way we've decided to deal with this situation in order to stem the tide of this court. All right, Your Excellency, on Monday, as soon as you emerged from isolation, you immediately uh, flagged off the distribution of, uh, you know, uh, some items to 20,000 indigenous uh, people of your community. Um, what informed uh, that decision, which some people have called an immediate response? Well, it wasn't really that immediate. When I um, put the state on the lockdown, uh, I also promised the citizens of the state that we would focus on providing palliatives for the most vulnerable segments of our population, particularly the elderly and the poor, uh, and that we would also look at a way of providing financial assistance for those who have suffered loss of income as a result of the lockdown. So this was just in partial fulfillment of that pledge that I made to the people when the lockdown started on the 30th of March. Uh, and it's the first phase. We're still going to do uh, a lot more than we've done. I mean, the indigent population in our state uh, is probably more than 20,000. And our vision is to at least cover 100,000 households, not just 20,000 households. Right, Your, Your Excellency, we also noticed that you have um, directed that your community, the people of Equity State, go to market on certain days, Tuesdays and Thursdays, to be able to restock and get you know, the things that they would need to keep body and soul going. How effective uh, has this order been? Well, uh, it's been a major relief to our people, and they've all trooped out to do this. Don't forget. This is a Kitty state. A majority of our people are Christians, and they are also undergoing the period of Lent. So Easter is around the corner. It's a period of renewal. It's a period of rejuvenation. And they really need to restock in order to be able to uh, participate in all the festivities around uh, uh, Easter, even if it is in a restrained manner it will still give them the opportunity to at least have things at home. Uh, and they, they respected the period that we, we gave. And 
by 2, 3 p.m., most people are back in their various homes. Don't forget, we continue to allow for essential items to be available to people for purchase, particularly food and drugs. So there is no curfew holding food and drugs. Uh, and there is no restraining order uh, uh, or any lockdown against such items so that people can still access the market uh, or where these essential items are up for sale. Your Excellency, we also, you were also had to have somewhat apologized uh, to your people. I mean, in your own words, uh, which I now quote, you said, we are particularly sorry for the hardship this lockdown and restriction has brought to our people, especially the poor ones, end of quote. Why did you feel the need to do this? Well, you know, for, for, for us, this is a democracy. Freedom is the most essential ingredient of any democracy. And um, you wouldn't appreciate the importance of freedom until you are under lock and key. And that is what has happened. And we feel strongly that we owe our people an apology and an explanation that this lockdown is really meant to save us from the rampaging uh, scourge in the land. We see what is happening in other parts of the world. And we don't want to take things for granted. Yes, we have only had two cases in AKT. And one of those cases uh, has turned negative, thankfully. But we also know what is happening next door to us. Uh, last week, Osho State had only one case. And now Osho has 20 cases. Uh, Italy, by February 21, had just 300 cases. And now we know what is happening in Italy. So you really want to adhere strongly and strictly to the advice of the Center for Disease Control, which is that we maintain social distancing and we ensure that we do not encourage unnecessary uh, socializing uh, in our environment. Let's take this last question, Your Excellency, before you go. In 2019, your state was ranked as the second in among the 10 top states with the highest IGR, indicating a higher capacity to generate a revenue internally. Now, does this explain you know, your source of uh, income or how you're able to get palliatives for the equity people uh, during this crisis of COVID-19? Well, it's a trade-off. It's also about what is important to us. Yes, we are generating more revenue in the state, but in the uh, context of our current situation, uh, you generate income on the basis of the uh, economic uh, activity in the state. There isn't much economic activity now, so we're not likely to generate as much revenue as we were generating before COVID-19 uh, scourge came on stream. But we are also having more resources available to us because we're blocking leakages. We're not on a punitive measure against our people. We're not interested in just taxing for tax sake. We are interested in people contributing to the economy so that we can give back to the poor and the vulnerable. We're very strong on our social investment uh, uh, program. And we're also very strong on our health and uh, education agenda. And on COVID-19 specifically, we started work way back. Uh, our tax force was set up on the 2nd of March, even before we had any case in the state. And we had maintained the consistent trajectory in ramping up our work, which is now leading us to focus on ensuring that AKT has a test center and we expand our isolation uh, space to a hundred bed and we provide more palliatives for people in the state. So we, we are on top of this, but we know that we're not alone in this. We need a national strategy and that is what has been our position. Uh, thankfully, I also wear another hat as the chairman of the Nigerian government. So our partnership with the federal government has emphasized the need for a joined up strategy between the states and the federal government because 
it's in our states that people reside. Uh, as much as we are a federal, uh, a federation, we, we want to ensure that whatever the federal government is doing, we are also strengthening that at the local level and we're bringing it to the attention of our people. Very quickly, Your Excellency, let's talk about hygiene and, uh, you know, provision of water and soap you know, for those in Ekiti and those who may not really have access to water. Is there anything exceptional that you're doing to make this happen uh, so that basic hygiene would be practiced to, for, us, for them to be able to curb the spread of uh, COVID-19? Well, clearly, one thing that COVID-19 has emphasized is the importance of basic hygiene. We are a state that is focused on eradicating open defecation. Uh, only last month, the Honorable Minister of Water Resources joined us here in launching uh, a campaign against open defecation, which then means we're paying more attention to water provision and to toilet facilities in our public institutions, primary schools, healthcare centers, the markets, and, and that is a campaign that is ongoing. But we are also mindful of the fact that you can't be talking to people to use running water, hand washing campaign without providing sustainable running potable water. And we have a major campaign of rehabilitating, as I speak to you, all the dams in our states uh, and also replacing pipes that have been there for 40, 50 years and has not been providing water. They've become rusty in the last decade. So we have a major water transformation initiative in the state, supported by the World Bank and the European Union. And as you go around the state, or if your correspondence is in a kitty, they will confirm to you that since my government came into office, we've been laying pipes across the state so that water can actually run in homes and be available for our people. Because it's not lack of water, it is lack of piping and lack of maintenance of our old dams that has made water scarce uh, amongst our people. So we're taking significant steps in, in, to address that. Keep safe, Your Excellency, and thank you for joining us on News on the Hour here on Plus TV Africa. Thank you for having me on your program, and congratulations on getting on DSTV. I'm very proud of you guys. Thank you so very much, Your Excellency.